let's chat about win conditions. In particular, in this video, I'll focus on early game comps versus late game comps. And at the end, we'll discuss the backdoor strategy. I'll use a recent pro tournament match for reference to discuss this topic. So we're currently watching a quarterfinals match between two respectable pro teams, V Gaming and BRU. This is a best of five, and the two teams are currently tied at 2v2. So winner of this match went advances. So both teams went all out in the draft. Look at these two comms, and based just off the heroes, tell me which team you think will win. The red team is really strong in the early game. Take a look at the mini map on the top left of your screen and notice how the red team is concurrently invading both the red and blue of the blue team. They're able to play this aggressively at level one because the heroes that they drafted are really strong in the early game. The red team has an Iggy mid, which is one of the strongest heroes at level two, especially against a comp like the blue team that doesn't have a hero who can immediately disable Iggy's S1 spamming. The red team also features a Richter Slayer laner. Richter's really strong at level one. In comparison, Richter's laning against Sienna, who is really weak pre-level four, as she doesn't have access to over half her kit prior to getting her ultimate. The red team drafted Violet for the AD lane. And while Violet is considered a more late game ADC, Violet actually does pretty well in the laning phase because she outranges most ADCs, including Brunhilde prior to level four. The red team should continue to take advantage of their early game strength and playing aggressively to take objectives. We see here the red team claiming vision of the Abyssal Dragon. Meanwhile, the blue team, which has a more late game comp, is playing much safer and they don't even try to contest the Abyssal Dragon. Instead, they're just uh, carefully farming and trying to stall to the late game. I love what Malik did here. He claimed vision of the blue team's red in advance, setting up an easy jungle invade for his jungler. After stealing the red, Elendor and the red team immediately heads towards the blue team's blue buff before it spawns. The red team provides us with an excellent example of how a strong early game team comp should play in their aggressive invasion of the blue team's jungle as well as ability to deny the blue team's late game composition of farm. The blue team tried to take the team fight in that blue buff, seeing as they all had ultimate and the Brunhilde and Zip were rotating over. We now see Violet and Malik trying to zone Brunhilde and the Zip from getting back to their lane and denying them from a full minion wave of farm. At a little over three minutes into the game, the red team has already built up a 2k gold lead. In particular, look at the gold of Zuka and then look at the gold of Elendor. This is why Elendor is considered an S tier jungler in the current meta. It's his fast jungle clear and ability to build up a gold lead relative to their enemy team that makes Elendor so strong currently. At the late game with the same amount of gold, Elendor actually loses the 1v1 against most ADCs in the current meta. It's important for Elendor to continue maintaining a gold lead uh, for him to be useful for his team. Fast forwarding a bit to five and a half minutes into the match, the red team has now built up three and a half K worth of gold. <laughs> 他想幫忙的話呢,這個Offline會整理的危險就是開啟就是不要第一步的控制,看一下側邊的話的中心太夜,那沒有辦法。哎呦,我的媽呀,我的媽呀,我的媽呀,我的媽呀,我的媽呀
in large due to the strong gold lead that the red team has built up so far. Let's chat about the blue team's comp. They have in Brahilda ADC, who is very strong in the late game, especially when paired with a zip. This has been a popular support ADC pairing in the pro tournament so far. Brunhilda's biggest weakness is the lack of a dash ability for self-protection, which is offset by Zip's S2's protection ability. In addition, Zip is able to relocate Brunhilda in the middle of her ultimate to position her in a more optimal place, making this a popular pairing in the pro scene. We're now at eight minutes into the match. Predict which team you think would win at this stage. Let's chat about the win conditions for both teams. The red team has built up a 4K gold lead and they have protected all of their towers so far while taking down two of the outer side lane towers of the red team. Red team needs to continue taking advantage of their gold lead to push tower and not let the blue team stall and farm up into the late game. The Elendor jungle really falls off in the late game and just gets shredded by that Brunhilde. And while Violet is usually a good late game ADC, the issue with the red team's composition and the Malik support is no one can really protect the Violet against the dive comp of the blue team to give her the opportunity to deal maximum damage. What the blue team has done a good job of so far is defending their towers against the two ADCs of the red team. And so long as they can stall to the late game or wait for the red team to make a mistake, then they can still find a way to make a comeback victory. We talked previously about how Brunhilda and Zip are really strong in the late game. The Zuka jungle is also really strong in the late game and his multi-dash dive and burst puts a major threat on the carry roles of the red team. And the thing about the Zip support is one mistake by the red team can cost them the game because Zip is able to relocate minions with his S2 ultimate. The blue team is not subject to the same slow minion walk speed that a typical team comp would be subject to. So the red team needs to be careful to not make a mistake that gets their team aced and they are making good progress on pushing the towers. Brunhilda's ultimate gives her range of the Dark Slayer from a distance, but Malik ults in to zone out the blue team. At 12 minutes into the match, the red team has now taken four Dark Slayers, three Abyssal Dragons, and five towers, exemplifying how a good early game team comp should play. In comparison, the blue team has zero slayers, zero dragons, and only one tower. But they do have all of their high ground towers and fast lane clear in their composition, giving them an opportunity to continue stalling into the late game. Zip's first ability is so disgusting in these types of situations. He throws an S1 at a slayer that connects to the Malik causing Malik to take a portion of all of the damage that the Slayer is taking from the tower shots and the blue team, forcing him to retreat back and allowing the blue team to successfully defend all three of their high ground towers. We're now nearing 15 minutes into the game and both teams are congregating near the newly spawned Super Dark Slayer. As I discussed during my last video, it's important for the red team to check this grass here in order to safely take the Slayer. Hey, 
，李明浩呢吃到了，自己家的输出点位，后面还没办法，还是被放倒了。看看这边二和真年到，看一下欧布莱威斯两端的电波领域，而猎影突袭哦，这边再次劈一个口水年到，往后滚。马瑞斯血线是满血，但是他一大三可以吗？他是愚公一大三吗？可以可以，他大卷应该快好了。有梦想有梦想，他大卷好了，有梦想吗？没有，没梦想。The blue team has successfully continued to stall into the late game, and we'll start to see the strength of the blue team's composition. Elendor Jungle is practically useless at this stage in the game, and note how he. Built a tank item to help him to survive against the burst damage of the blue team. Both teams are once again congregating near the Dark Slayer. Iggy used her ultimate to check vision of that Slayer bush, and the red team decides to discontinue attempting the Slayer after gaining vision of the blue team's location. The red team continues to try and maintain vision of the Slayer. However, Iggy, their mid laner, did recall home, so they should avoid a fight with the blue team if possible. Both teams continue to play safely and waiting for the other to make a mistake. Violet needs to position particularly carefully in these teams' fights, as we discussed previously. Given the strong dive composition of the blue team and the lack of a protective support or stuns in the red team, Richter gets revealed on the map, clearing the minion wave on the bot side. So the blue team tries and take a five v four fight. The red team is retreating and Malik is at half health. Richter does arrive at this point. I think he wants to check vision of Slayer, only to find the members of the blue team here, and he is forced to retreat. He does survive, however, the blue team, with knowledge that both the Malik and Richter are low on HP, will attempt the Slayer here. Brunhilda uses her ultimate to zone out the Malik, and the. Elendor and Violet, knowing that they would be unable to contest the Slayer outnumbered, pushes in the minion wave in the mid lane. The Yena does get there in time, and that mid high ground tower survives with a sliver of health remaining. At this stage in the game, the blue team has the upper hand. Not only do they have the Dark Slayer and Slayer buff. But they also have a much stronger late game comp and a super tower pusher with Brunhilda. In comparison, the red team has a much weaker comp, and the later this game dr drags on, the harder it will be for the red team to win. It looks like Elendor and Violet are camping in an attempt to steal that mid high ground tower, and they might actually make an attempt at the core minion list. If Richter goes with them to take that tower. Meanwhile, the blue team is pushing in quickly, and we see a showcase of Brunhilde's fast wave clear. Look at the mini map. Richter and Violet are trying to go for a steal. However, both Zuka and Yena are recalling. Yena does go back in time. It looks like Elendor didn't stay with Richter and Violet. Instead, he recalled. Zip rolls in the minions, and the blue team makes a quick push to end the game. Wow, what an ending! I wonder if the red team went all in on the back door, and Elendor had stayed with Violet and Richter, if they would have been able to successfully make a back door. I I think the issue is the no one was there to stop the Yenna from recalling. I don't know. What What do you think?